G'day. My name is David Skeet, and I'm one of the founders of the Buzz Off Malaria Campaign. Today, I'd like to share with you exactly how our campaign started and some of the events that happened in the early days of Buzz Off. Now, for over 30 years, uh, my team and myself have been working with refugees and internally displaced people on the Thai Burmese border. We've spent years trying to empower these people and to help them to stay alive. At one point, we were uh, running primary health care training, uh, trying to improve and increase the medical skills of medical workers in the IDP zones, the refugee camps, and small villages that were close to the Thailand border. To do this, we used the skills of Australian doctors and other medical workers who volunteered their services. One of these volunteers was a man called Robin Wales, who was a medical scientist who specialised in malaria. Now one night uh, after training, Robin and I were talking about malaria and he told me that his research showed that the malaria situation in Burma was extremely bad. I responded by telling him that I'd just read a medical study done in the IDP zones close to the Thai border that showed that 25% of the people in the IDP areas who caught malaria died from malaria. That's a huge number. As we talked, God spoke to us. Now, sometimes God speaks through his word and sometimes he speaks through a human voice. On this occasion, he used my voice. I suddenly said to Robin, what we need to do is start an international campaign against malaria and call it buzz off. We both stopped and we stared at each other. Both of us were sure that in this moment, God had given us this idea. This was God's idea, not mine. The problem was I didn't know how to make it happen. I'd never run a malaria campaign before and I was unsure how to move forward. Now, a few days later, as I traveled back to Australia, I was thinking about Buzz Off and, and how to start it. And what, we, what would we need to do? I jotted a few ideas down on my iPad and then just prayed and asked God to lead me. The next day, I went to church and the leader of my Bible study, who happens to be a, a, a professor at a technical university in Melbourne, uh, came to me and said, what's God been saying to you? So I told him about Bozoff. And he said to me, if I were you, I would email a man like me and ask me to get it get my students to make you a website. So I did that. And his students made our first website. But I was still unsure how to proceed. I had a word from God and I had a website and a few ideas and that was it. A couple of weeks later, a friend of mine came to my office. He said to me, I've just heard about Buzz Off. Now I wondered where he'd heard about it because I hadn't told him anything about it. And he said to me, would you mind if I got you some funding? And I said, sure. In a few months time, he had got us enough funding to do buzz off in Burma for 10 years. I was stunned. I had funding. I had some ideas. I had a website, but I still didn't know how to move forward. And as I prayed, God spoke to me very clearly and said that I was to go to Burma and go to Burma through the front door. That meant flying into Yangon. I told my friends in the refugee camp that I was going to Burma and asked them to pray for me. They said to me, we will tell our friends and our family to come and visit you in, in your hotel. So when I arrived in Yangon, People who I'd never met before were coming to visit me in my hotel. And some of them were major Christian leaders of denominations in Burma. One 
was a nationally recognised malaria expert. And as I began to uh, speak to these Christian leaders, a similar theme came out of what they were saying to me. They were saying that Christianity in the major areas, the major cities like Yangon and Mandalay, was allowed to be practised. But in the remote areas, it wasn't. And if church workers or pastors went out there to preach the gospel, even to their own flocks, they could be arrested and jailed for doing so. So I said to these leaders, what if we trained your people to be malaria workers and certified them? If they did the malaria work in the villages, we wouldn't mind if they were also holding services, planting churches or having Bible studies. All of them liked this idea very much. So we began to run training seminars in, in Burma in Yangon. And later we moved to running them also in Mandalay. One thing that came to our notice early on was that people were travelling very large distances, sometimes days, to come to this training. And so we began to move all over the country into more remote areas so that people didn't have to travel so far. So this gave us uh, a lot of uh, other information as well as we observed what things were like in the more uh, distant areas. The results of this were, was amazing. We were getting reports back from the denominations that they had re-established congregations in remote areas. Their people had planted new churches. And uh, non-Christian nurses who had come to, our, uh, come to our, our training were being led to faith in Christ by the Christian workers who were also doing that training. One set of doctors uh, working out of Mandalay were going into areas and doing not only doing their medical work, but they were also doing some analysis of what the medical needs were in the villages that they were working in. They came to our training and they, after six months, they gave us a report back which said that in villages that had adopted what we said in our training, that is, to, for the locals to manage mosquitoes and to sleep under mosquito nets that were treated, malarial deaths in those villages had dropped by up to 65%. That is a huge number. I also had a pastor come to my hotel one time and he told me that he was visiting a village where they hated Christians and if, if they found out that you were a Christian they would ask you to leave their village straight away. This pastor was staying with the head man and had been praying and asking God for a way to present Jesus to him. He noticed that the head man's only son was very sick and to the pastor it looked like malaria. He tested him with a rapid diagnostic test and found out the boy had malaria. In fact, it was PF malaria, the one that can be fatal. The pastor said to the head man, your son has got malaria and if we don't get him to a clinic right now, he could die. So in the middle of the night, the three of them on a motorbike went through the jungle some 20 kilometers or so until they found uh, the local clinic and they woke up the nurse. She retested the boy and confirmed the, the diagnosis, but the boy was getting sicker and sicker. He was treated at the clinic for three days for malaria and he lived. The nurse told the head man that he had got his son to the clinic just in time. With tears in his eyes, the pastor told me that the head man had become a believer and that he and his family had been baptised last week. He said, I baptised three other families in the village as well and we're going to build a church. Buzzoff has trained over a thousand Christian workers in Burma and we continue to work there. Now we have an opportunity to work in Nigeria and we're looking forward to hearing the amazing stories of God's faithfulness to the people of Nigeria through Buzzoff. May God bless you. Mm -hmm.